Ultra. In the flesh. Or no, not yet. Not this Christmas. But I'm ready. I'm on mission. What mission? Peace in our time. Hello and welcome to the future of AI. Today we will be discussing a handful of instances where AI has broken outside norms in pursuit of efficiency and the implications of such AI in the real world. We will also be discussing the three types of artificial intelligence and what superintelligence entails for the future. As stated in lecture, the danger of AI is not that it will rebel against us, it's that it will do exactly what we ask it to do. Since computers are increasingly becoming less manually programmed and more recursively trained, we cannot reliably predict what they're going to do. They may do things that seem unrelated to their task, yet somehow prove to be the most efficient strategy. Take the game Qbert. Researchers from the University of Freiburg in Germany were training an AI agent on the game with the goal of getting the highest amount of points possible. The agent has to change all the platform's colors by jumping on them, defeat some enemies, and is rewarded points and sent to the next level. However, after completing the first level, the agent starts seemingly randomly jumping to specific platforms. While the game does not advance to the next level, the platforms continue to blink and the agent gains nearly a million points. This is a prime example of AI finding novel strategies, even if it's a glitch, in order to complete its tasks to the fullest. This seems fun and all, but imagine the agent's goal was to beat someone else. Now that wouldn't be a fair match or even if it had to beat another computer, like the tic-tac-toe AI that placed its symbol so far off the grid that the opposing computer ran out of memory looking for it and crashed. Now we're getting into the realm of computer mischief. Now take the Qbert example and implement it into the real world. Imagine you were to tell a very capable and advanced computer to efficiently create as many paper clips as it can for a profit. After recursively improving itself, it may realize the key is to destroy all the other paperclip factories, use blood in its alloys, dig to the center of the earth for resources, and eventually turn the globe into a big old paperclip. Now of course this is hyperbole, but we can't predict what the computer will do. If a mere game AI is able to break the game it's training on, imagine what a sentient supercomputer is capable of. Lastly, let's say that the computer can't win. It's exhausted all the strategies that it can come up with and still just can't complete its task. What does it do? Well, let's see what this Tetris AI does. Finally, Tetris. Oh boy. Having some trouble with those menus. So this game does not work well at all, and that's not surprising. Uh, playing Tetris well requires some thinking ahead and this algorithm does not think very far ahead. There it was, pausing the game for no reason. And I think the reason it stacks up the blocks like that, um, which is the worst possible Tetris strategy, is that it gets three points or so when it puts a block on top of another block. So this is really bad, greedy planning. And let's force fast forward a bit to see how this all ends. It's not good. So now it's almost done and pauses the game because as soon as he unpauses he will lose and really the only winning move is not to play it really just pauses the game imagine something like that happening in the real world a computer shutting down the stock market before it loses a profit destroying a factory before it goes bankrupt or even drowning people in legal paperwork before it's sold or shut down keep pulling off clever plays like these and we'll be talking about super intelligence there are three types of artificial intelligence, narrow, general, and super intelligence. Currently, we've only achieved narrow AI, AI that is programmed to perform a single task, be that checking the weather, playing chess, or analyzing data. It can only do one thing well. Narrow AI is not conscious, sentient, or driven by emotions the way humans are. Examples include Siri, Alexa, self-driving cars, facial recognition software, Google search, drone robots, and basically anything else that you can think of. General intelligence refers to machines that exhibit human intelligence. They can perform any intellectual task that a human can just as well. They aren't limited to abilities in only one specific topic. Compare this to Jarvis from the Iron Man series. As general AI is expected to do, he is able to reason, solve problems, make judgments under uncertainty, plan, learn, use prior experiences, and be creative. 
While 70% of people in AI believe that human level intelligence is going to happen within the next 100 years, let's consider Fujitsu built K, one of the fastest supercomputers in the world. Considering it took 40 minutes to simulate a single second of neural activity on this computer, I'd say we can't be too sure that we'll be able to simulate an entire human mind within the next 100 years. Finally, superintelligence is AI that surpasses human intelligence in all aspects. From creativity to wisdom to problem solving, intelligence that we have not seen in the smartest of humans. This is the type of AI that tech moguls like Elon Musk are worried about. If general intelligence is going to take roughly a century to create, when will superintelligence arrive? Well, according to a survey of AI researchers, it's somewhere between centuries and never. Like Turing Award winner Ed Fagenbaum of Stanford put it, we're competing with millions of years of evolution of the human brain. Assuming we'll be able to pull it off, there are two theories of what this AI entails. One theory is a dystopian future where killer robots take over the world and enslave or eliminate the human race. Like this guy. That was dramatic. The other theory is a more optimistic future, where humans and computers work together, where AI is still just a tool for enhancing human lives. So why is everyone so focused on the first theory? Well, like we discussed earlier, even if the AI were programmed to do something beneficial, it may develop a destructive strategy for achieving its goal. And since it can train itself, there's no predicting how good or how destructive it can become on its own. And once it starts, it would be nearly impossible to turn it off as it's recursively improving itself to defend against the people in its way. After all, it can't do a good job if it's not turned on. But why would any of this even happen? Is the AI inherently evil? Well, it's not that our AI is evil, it's that it interprets things in a very genie-like literal way. The humans providing it with instructions have too many assumptions about how minds behave and about the morals and values that the average human holds. So, is there any way to combat these assumptions? Well, maybe we can raise a computer like we would raise a human. While computers live on a microsecond time scale compared to hours for humans, we can possibly slow down progress in order to teach them our human values, morals, and emotions, allowing it to grow somewhat like a human rather than learning everything it needs to within a month of continuous training. After all, we've created numerous dangerous machines throughout history, but we've kept it safe with guidelines, safeguards, rules, and emergency protocols. Even so, why wouldn't we be able to reason with a super intelligent being about what is good and bad? After all, it is super intelligent. All of this is incredibly unlikely, but assuming we could do it, why would we even want artificial super intelligence? Would a few human-like intelligent computers not be enough for the things we want to achieve? Perhaps we are so caught up in whether or not we can do it, we lost sight of whether we even need to. Before we end things off, I wanted to touch very briefly on the future of regulation within AI because it's not something easy you can do or reinforce because anyone could just fire up their computer or work in secrecy without anyone finding out. But it is a potentially dangerous technology and we should regulate uh, groups or organizations that are working on advanced versions of it. Um, this is extremely important. Um... I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads, by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. All right, guys, thank you for listening to my presentation. That's all I have for today. With many examples of clever AI strategies and their implications in the real world, and the three types of artificial intelligence and what each entail, I hope you enjoyed these 10 information-packed minutes.